Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. By BlackRifleCoffee.com Luke Perry. Luke Perry pass. God damn it. Oh, how does Luke Perry die, James? I don't know. We all don't know. It doesn't seem real. There's it hasn't happened in a while where people have been like very affected by a death. Yeah. And and weirdly affected. I'm getting texts and messages from people my age group, right? Right. That are just like this feels really weird. I I think because it feels like he was one of us and yeah. now it's like it, like somebody you went to high school with for some reason. And it's obviously because of the show I think from 90210. Obviously, but but we all watched it so much that, you know, he felt like he was like, like, you knew him, like he was one of your buddies. And then he passes away in complete, like he's completely healthy. Not only that, but he's got a career resurgence. Again, he's on another hit TV show. Um, 90210 was getting picked up for, for a reboot. Like the he could he have been starring on two shows. The day it was announced. Yeah. He had a stroke. But he was killing it on, on Riverdale and... For somebody this healthy and this young, because he was only 52, to just have a stroke. You know, I, I would understand if it was a car accident or, you know, like, like a Paul Walker situation where you're just like, oh, fuck. A car went out of control. And right. like there was some tragic result because of something you did right. or somebody else did. But and, when it's just that you're sitting healthy somewhere, yeah. your career is doing great, you have a you started younger. They're still shooting Riverdale, by the way. I mean they, they canceled like, production absolutely, for him. But, but it's he would need to be there right, this week. Right. You know? Um you're sitting there healthy. You started over with a younger one, fiance. Yeah. yeah. You know, your kids are good and grown, you're on your way. <laughs> you know, he was killing it. Yeah. And to to be sitting there healthy and feel like, okay, now I can like start enjoying my life. It's a real lesson. Look, not that he hasn't always enjoyed his life. I feel because like he's look, let's face it, he's had a really great life. Luke Perry. It was just short. Luke Perry. And sudden and unexplainable. Like there still isn't answers. There's still like why him? Why could he not recover? How massive was this? Were there any signs before? Like, no one has any answers, so it's, it just feels like it's making everyone, the people that are texting me and messaging me, it's making everyone really think about their own mortality, which doesn't always, it doesn't happen with every celebrity death, right? Sure. Bourdain, it's like, it doesn't make you think about how life is short. It makes you sad for him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But there's but even with Bo- like Bourdain things, killed himself. That's what I mean. You you feel Luke, sad Luke for him. Luke Perry did not, and yeah, it's hard when you're just a healthy dude. And I mean, he was in, he was in great shape, but look, he he still looks like Luke Perry, just older. That's it. Um, it looked great. The other thing is everyone saying how amazing he was. Yeah, just so nice, such a great guy, so great to work with, so humble. Where you're just like, ah. Oh. Across the board. Why couldn't it be a dick? Yeah. <laughs> right? He had yeah. just been in um, the Tarantino movie. Yeah. Yeah. And, Once Upon um, a Time in Hollywood comes out this summer. Leonardo came out and was just like, he was the best guy to work with. This is so sad. Yeah. Uh, and that movie comes out this summer. Uh, I believe he had three episodes of Riverdale in the bank. So those are coming out. Right. And I mean, look, to be in a Quentin Tarantino movie is probably a lifelong dream. Oh and to God. not be able to see it, to see that film, man, that's a bummer. Uh, yeah. it's, just, it's just a bummer all the way around. I mean, I, I remember, you know, us in high school, the, I remember right around senior year was, you know, 90210, the, the height of it and all that stuff. Like, we, somebody would get a keg every Wednesday night, and then we would, we would go to that person's house Watch that Melrose Place, and then 
you know, that was our, our night keg for that. Well, there was like 30 week? of us. Oh, there was like 30, 30 people there. So you had such a different a experience. You had such a different high control. school experience than I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so different. Yeah. yeah. So we, we would always get a keg and then gather around for that. And then we would discuss it in depth, like what had happened. And it, it was the best, like guilty pleasure of all time. And we look forward to doing it every week. Because of the show, but also because of like the friendships, you know, whatever that surrounded the show. That's why I felt like affected deeply by it, where I was just like, man, I, f- I fucking watch this guy every day for every, every week for t- almost 10 years. That show was on for almost 10 years. At a certain age group, he was your first crush. Yeah. Your first like bad boy. Interest in a bad boy, yeah. Well, he had and he this, felt like our age, even though he wasn't. He had this James Dean quality yes. to him, yes. but I didn't. I, and I'll, I'll get killed for saying this by other actors, but like I never got down on James Dean, and like I didn't get the whole. To me, it seemed like James Dean was always trying too hard. Where Luke Perry wasn't right. Luke Perry just seemed cool, no matter it was what. Just cool, yeah. God, he had that house in Malibu, which you can still. You can tell the house that it is when you drive. Have you ever seen it on the PCH? No. It's the house that he... Do you remember when he lived by himself? In the show? In the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lived by himself and he was just like a surfer. And he had this great place in Malibu. Does he own that house? No, but it was the house that they (laughs) shot in, right? I know that house. And it's like, so it's all dark wood. And there's like this little... Cove. Yeah. 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 Um, Because he got (laughs) some kind of money from his dad member. Yeah. Oh, I'm just gonna Dylan, go down. To, I'm just gonna go. Dylan. What are you gonna do this summer? I'm just gonna go down to Baja and surf. God, and it was just like, fact, fuck yeah, you are. The fact that fuck those, yeah, you are. You're that, going down to Baja to surf. Is that um nonsense? Shannon. Yeah, yeah. Shannon Doherty. No, no. Um, She's had her own ups and, and downs too. The fact that he couldn't get a, a well. She had. She beat he cancer. Got, he got a. He got a couple gals up to that house. Right. It always felt like they wanted to leave though, and I was always like. This guy has his own house yeah. in Malibu yep. when you guys are in high school. Yeah. How is he not like beating? I guess he was. Was yeah. he beating the girls off? I mean, I, I, it kind of I felt like, sh- you know, for, Shannon for would keep time. leaving. Kelly would keep leaving. I can't. I got to leave. I can't. I got to leave. Yeah. I was like, you do what you have to do. <laughs> this isn't me too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You do what you have to do to wake up to that view. Yeah. Both in Malibu and to him. Like, you, you bet. Know, right? You bet. I was always very confused by, uh, by their, their needing to leave always. And then also, where are you going? If yeah, you where live you going? in Beverly Hills, how far of a drive is that? Yeah, 45 with traffic easily. Easily. Just stay the night. Just stay the night. I, n- I never understood it. Uh, but he was, dude, he was great. And that one sucked, man. That was a bummer. It really sucked, and again, it was a weird. Uh, I Death. got I got text pretty late of people, um, like a group text with the girls in the neighborhood too, that were like, "Hey, guys, um, this is really affecting me. Just wondering." I, and I, I know, like, I know why. By the way, yeah. I, I know why you got the late text. Okay. So when when I got home, because that story broke right after we left, we were recording. Right after we, right after I left, um, and I called you and I said, "Hey, he just passed away." Yeah, and. I, I think later on in the evening is where all the news networks caught up to playing old clips from 90210. Yes. That's when it got me because I haven't seen the show since it went off air because I watched yeah. all of them live every week. That wasn't like, uh, oh, I caught this five years later and then binge watched it. You know, like right. Which used to I watch it live every well. week. Yeah, I've done it twice. Yeah. So w- once I started seeing all of those clips again, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. It just brought back a lot of memories of how much I enjoyed the show and watching him on the show and everything. And I was yeah. like, man, God damn it. One of the girls sent the gif of him. He pulls up and the, it's the first scene and it's in the opening. And it's, and he takes off the helmet. Right. And yeah. he just like, that's your first introduction. Yeah. To Luke he pulls Perry. up on a mi- motorcycle and takes the helmet off and yeah. kind of shakes the hair a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, like I've, I've got to make this about me today, but I almost died. I almost died today too. Yeah, I was gonna say you almost Luke Perryed yourself, but I, I didn't no. want to go there. I you guess sh- no. But I, I, 
I, I, but I almost killed myself. And that would have been the worst death possible, by the way. Yeah. Vitamins. Right. I was choking. I actually, like, I, I don't believe that I've ever choked in my life like that. Like a child. Yeah. Choking on vitamins. Um, I took a, took a bunch of vitamins, uh, like I do every morning. You know, just some vitamin C, normal shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're, they're fat. They're, they're thick pills. And that got lodged in my throat. And I, yeah. I had to give the old, you know, Reggie Miller, I'm choking right mm-hmm. now. And you were no help whatsoever. You were like, well, you're talking. Well, you're talking and you're breathing. So that's barely, A. Barely. That's A, when people are choking, you have them talk to you. Uh-huh. Because if you can talk, you're not really choking. It's just something you need to like move through. Like if you couldn't say anything to me, then something is stuck and I have to like figure out Heimlich all of a sudden. Do you not know it? I mean, I know it, but I've never had to do it on a... a I've done it on a human. On a man? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't even human. know how that would work. You would have to do it on a chair, like to yourself, in Oof. order for it to work. Great. Really? So I'm going to die in your presence. No, I mean, I'm there to support you. How was I no help? No, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying you don't know if you don't know the Heimlich maneuver. That's I know a, the that's Heimlich, but okay. you're a really big person. I understand so. that. Yeah. Um, but you got you to gotta give it your all. Adrenaline should kick in, yeah, flight I, or flight, James. I would, but you, know? you were talking to me and you were breathing, so I, I knew that the Heimlich didn't have to happen. It was just something lodged and you needed to calm down. I threw up for about a good hour yeah. afterwards. Um, yeah. Man, that was fucking scary as shit. And all I kept thinking was, if I die choking on vitamins I don't, like, that I don't even want to take, um, you make me take vitamins. So if I die choking on vitamins mm. that I don't even want to take, I, that's, there's no worse. Like if it was, you know, a Philly cheesesteak, great. Congratulations. I, I went out my way. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, if it was a Philly cheesesteak pizza from Domino's, ooh, even better. Mm. But vitamin C, if vitamin C was the, the cause, of, how did he right. die? Vitamin C. How do you even explain yeah, that to people? You weren't going to die. How do you explain mm-hmm. that to people, James? Mm-hmm. My husband died of vitamins. Um, Choking on vitamins. Yeah, I guess it would, it would be hard. It would be hard for sure. Yeah. You weren't, you weren't going to die. Yeah, but I, I was pretty close to death, James. Mm-hmm. Pretty, you can still hear it in my voice right now. You know? Right. Voice is a little gravelly right now mm-hmm. from, uh, from saving my own life. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of... Well, I don't want to. No, nah, I, w- I will say it. We, we never do it this early in the show, but I'm going to go ahead and say the revolutionary figure of the day is me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Save my own life. I'm going to look right in the camera on this one for the video. And that's on a YouTube. lesson for a lot of people is be your own hero. Hero. Sometimes you have to be, you know. Don't wait for someone else to what? I don't I have a know cape. what I was going to do. I don't have a cape, um, but I was my own hero today. Sometimes yeah. you are the hero you, you deserve, you know. And I think, again, I think this should, this show should really be about me and my hero. I can be a hero, baby. Hero. Um, Because I did it. I saved my own life today, Jabes. What was that song by the fray, How to Save a Life? Guess. How to save a life. Guess what? I have the answer. Um, And it's me. Yeah, it's just I, I'm my own answer. Calming down and I, having a seat. I'm going to I'm going to hit up the fray, calming I down. think on Twitter today and just say, "Hey guys, I figured out that song." Yeah. And it's me. Right. Um right. Uh, Mariah Carey had a hero you song too. You were trying too. to kill yourself. I mean, you just kept gulping down water. It's um, just like Mariah Carey had a song called I hate to cut you off here, James, but I need to. Sure. Mariah Carey had a song called Hero too. Mhm. And um I think now would probably be an appropriate time to play it. Read the nah, just read those lyrics aloud. Oh, okay. Um, Go ahead. Okay, this is this is "Hero" by Mariah Carey. This is uh, obviously written about me, uh, dedicated to me for saving my own life today. To me, from me. There's a hero. If you look inside your heart, you don't have to be afraid of what you are. There's an answer. If you reach into your soul and the sorrow that you know will melt away. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. And you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive. God damn it. That is, that, that's so me. Yeah. That is so me today. So you. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Fuck. Mm-hmm. When you, so when you feel like hope is gone, 
Look inside you and be strong. And be strong. And then you'll finally see the truth that a hero yeah, lies in you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, no truer words have been spoken today. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, so it could have been it could have been Luke yesterday and then me today. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know who it was last night? King Kong Bundy died. Who? Uh, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I don't. Oh, boy, God. James, this is wow. it is really really tough. Uh, classic heel. He was uh, in rest, at just about every WrestleMania you can imagine. Uh, went up against Hogan. Um, but yeah, KK Bundy, King Kong Bundy. I was not expecting that one. Sixty one. Another one just gone too soon. It is young. I mean, I just think about my parents. It is, yeah. Like. My mom is 62. So. Yeah. Luke Perry is 10 years younger than my mom. Yeah. Crazy, right? Yeah. King Kong Bundy was 61. Yeah. So. He was a bigger man, though. Sure. So. Explainable, right? Like, you go like, okay. (laughs) Right. And I think that was, you know, again, was the thing with Luke, where it was like, gosh, he just looks. I know. So good. It's like when supermodels die. You know that's, that's the hardest time I have right. in my life. Right. Is when a supermodel dies. Because I, mm-hmm. I just can't understand why. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of people where it's just like, all right, cool. Sure. You know, I understand what happened. Uh, like when you watch the shows on A&E, like the 600-pound man can't yeah. get out of their house. And they've got to cut open the fucking but wall. But they're still to bring alive. Out. They're still alive. But when they pass. And Luke's dead. Exactly. When they pass, it's just like, uh, all uh-huh. right, cool. Uh-huh. But don't take Luke Perry. Don't take supermodels. Don't take Luke. No. Luke was don't take a in pimpy, shape. A pimpy daddy. Crazy. A pimpy daddy. Wow. Yeah. 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 I mean, and that was the heart of it. It is hard when attractive people die. It is. Again, don't not used don't to be you attractive. Fucking dare attractive take supermodels at the time yeah. of their death. Yeah, 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 very hard. Oh, really hard. Be like if Kate Beckinsale died. Sure, I'd be in mourning for days. I saw uh, th- is that your their uh, well. I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, uh, I, I saw the picture of her and Pete Davidson, which is I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Does that guy have like? A two foot dick? Yes, he has a he has a, is that, uh, is that, a baguette. Yeah. Is that real? <laughs> yes. Oh, who who said that? Is it was um, that reported? It's a word on many streets. Okay. Word on many streets is he's he's got a baguette. I I, do, I don't understand. So like you take his first girlfriend, right? It was uh Larry Larry David's daughter. It made who, sense. She was kind of quirky sure. and young. And you're like, and, okay, yeah, you guys yeah. are weird, funny people. E- exactly. You talk like, about all right, your cool. Issues. I get it. And then the Ariana Grande thing happened. And I was like, hang on, let me back up the truck here. And that what? I sort of get because she would perform on Saturday Night Live. He was kind of a, you know, a big deal on it. At a no, he's, he's actually terrible on Saturday Night Live. He's terrible, but when he was first on it, he was like the youngest kid and yeah, the youngest everyone would talk about cast him member ever next to Eddie Murphy. Right. Yeah. So right. he was sort of a talked about person. Sure. And uh, she would perform there a couple times and then be at NBC doing stuff with Jimmy Fallon. So she was just kind of around and you just sort of think, OK, like they are at an office together. Right. Quite a bit. Right. So it made sense, but not looks wise but yeah yeah and so you know this this picture's gone viral of of the two of them making out at a hockey game and they're dating kate beckinsale like a weird and him. make out and, and he's he looks like he has sickle cell or some form of yeah what, what, what did, you, did you say his crohn's disease or something i know he has something i forget what it is he's got some disease yeah it's right? some kind of thi- yeah so the reason why the kate beckinsale thing is a big deal to me there has only been two people that i have been introduced to where they said specifically, do not d- look directly at her. It'll physically hurt your eyes. Sure. We, we've talked about Melania on the show, and that was true. You were with me. Uh, Melania, uh, you think? Yeah. No, well, remember the, the publicist came up. To, I'm not going to say who it is, but the publicist came up to it and said, don't stare at her directly in the eyes. It'll melt your, oh, <laughs> okay. your eyes out of your face. Yeah, yeah. And you and I were like, well, how hot is she? And then we saw her and we were Pretty like, Pretty striking. Jesus Christ. Pretty striking. Almost doesn't look, sure. she, she almost doesn't look real in real life. We were yeah. like, all right, cool. Um, yeah, he has Crohn's, which is, yeah. you guys, I mean, you're shitting. All the time. 
you you can't eat. You can't have a good life. You're he's very you know. pale. Yeah. So I, it's just how do you get a girl like Kate Beckinsale or Ariana friends. Grande? Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. can. You can, but it's something you a have, lot some, of trips to the bathroom. Yeah, that they have to deal with. I don't know how you can. Yeah, how you can maintain a, a relationship when your partner is always taking a shit. I don't. I, you probably couldn't do it with me, and I couldn't do it with you. I can. It's I can admit like, that. Yeah. Yeah. If, we, if we were dating and I said, hey, this is part of my life, you'd be like, dude, I can't, I can't, man. Like, you're always taking a shit. Yeah, or you, like, can't eat certain things, or it's always, like, if we go out right. to eat, which is, like, my favorite thing, right? Exactly, exactly If yeah. you had to be yeah. like, oh, I don't know, and then you eat something weird. Yeah. And it just can't completely it. ruins the night. I can't. No, and can't I'm do it. Sorry. Not, no, I, and I get it. So, Kate, Kate Beckinsale, we had the same agent um, at ICM when I, when I very first, I think... It was, right, it was right after I got the, the new guy and that all started. We had the same agent, right? Mm. So we go to this party and uh, they were like, hey, you want to meet Kate Beckinsale? And I was like, oh my God, I'd love to. Happy. Literally same heads up of like, hey man, just don't, st- I, think, I think the exact phrase was don't stare at her for too long. Like, cause you're just going to get lost in, in how gorgeous she is. And mm-hmm. I was like, fuck off and i i had said fuck off dude yeah i've like at that point i was like i'd been to a lot of shit and i was like i've met a lot everybody i, I felt at that point i was like fuck off dude nobody's impressive to me mm-hmm. and this was after i got you know dish ragged by helena christensen at that one party mm-hmm. you know who was the supermodel on the fucking no nah, all in love you know that video oh yeah 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 i had seen her up close in person i was like eh, all right cool how how much how much hotter are we gonna get and then he was like, all right, cool. Boom. Two minutes later, I got introduced and it was, we were a foot apart. Like she's a close talker, mm-hmm. um, which, which is great. The problem is she, it, ridiculously hot. We were just like, I don't know what to do or say at this point or whatever. Had a lovely conversation with her. She kind of, she's kind of flirty, mm-hmm. you know? And I was like, man, this is, this is maybe going somewhere. Like I feel this is good. She was married to like mm-hmm. a huge director at the time. Right. About 20 minutes into this convo, I had to be pulled away of like, oh, okay, that's enough. Like mm-hmm. she, she's married. And right. I was like, I don't understand, but she's no hot and I can't do the thing. And so with Kate Beckinsale, a lot of people are making a big deal about her age right now. Mm-hmm. That she's 45, I think. It was, is that what they're saying? She's 45 and he's 25. Right. And there's a big age gap. I can tell you this with absolute certainty. It does, age does not affect that fucking woman whatsoever. Uh, he is extremely lucky to be with Kate Beckinsale. Like beyond lucky at this point. And I, I cannot figure out that whole sitch. Kate Beckinsale is the fucking truth. Like the absolute fucking truth. I don't... It, it, Again, they're they're saying, oh, man, maybe it's her age or whatever. It's not the age. It's not her fucking age. I I don't know what it is with this dude and and what's happening there, but it's given America a false sense of hope is Mm -hmm. what it's doing. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you you make one post that you're going to kill yourself, and what happens? You end up in a Judd Apatow movie. Judd Apatow is is making a movie for him that he is the lead in and that I think he's writing He's dating Kate Beckinsale now, and, and he's also new best friends with like Machine Gun Kelly. Did you see them hanging out all the time? That makes sense. Maybe. I mean, they're both just like weird, skinny, pale. Maybe. Weirdos. And we watched what the last SNL last week or the week before, whatever the last new one was. He was in it for about ten seconds, um, doing a, a terrible oh. impression, and was- he had one line, one line in the whole show, and it was just like I. I I, I cannot figure that, that dude out whatsoever. It makes no sense to me. Now, with, with like, like take Ariana Grande, for example, right? She was with Mac Miller. Mac Miller was fucking talented as shit. Right. Like, that dude was yeah. on another planet. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that he produced and did all of his own shit and would tinker with it forever. And that guy was brilliant. I, the Pete Davidson guy, what? Like, what? Yeah. Um. Baguette. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I guess, I guess, but, and he keeps popping up in the news. Um, he popped up in the news two days before the Kate Beckinsale thing. He was doing stand up. He was doing a stand up gig in, I want to say it was New Jersey. Um, New Jersey, Connecticut, somewhere in there, right? And he starts, he starts with this joke of, 
So I, I had a friend who died uh, in, in his apartment. And somebody screams out, was it Mac Miller? Mm. And he stopped the entire show, looked for security to get this guy thrown out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the guy eventually got thrown out. And a lot of people were bitching. They were like, hey, man, you're a stand-up and this, you're going to get heckled. And like, you're going to lead with a joke like that. That's a pretty easy... Yeah. Pretty easy give for somebody out in the audience to to throw, toss out a Mac Miller thing, you know, drunk at a club. Right. I, and a lot of like people had a problem with that. I do too. Like get on with your fucking set. Like let's, let's you're not going to hear the end of that. Right. That, you know, like, look, that Ariana Grande thing was so big and it was such a big story. You're not going to hear the fucking end of that. So for you to stop a show and throw somebody out for that joke, like good luck. Now you're just opening the doors for the rest of your gigs. Like, shit. It's only going to get worse. But yeah, just showing up, rolling out to, to Knicks games with, with fucking hot-ass Kate Beckinsale. Mm. Meanwhile, Luke, Luke Perry's dead. Right. You know? Right. Well, let's face it. If, if it was Luke Perry dating Kate Beckinsale, wouldn't bat an eyelash. No. Wouldn't, wouldn't blink. I'd be like, dude, you're with Dylan. Yeah. Like. Yep. Absolutely. Makes sense. Way to go. And then Pete Davidson. Great age difference. Come on. And so if you do believe in God out there, why don't you ask him this? Why why didn't he take Pete Davidson instead of Luke Perry? Right. I think that's the real question you need need to ask yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's not fair at all. Yeah. That is is not fair whatsoever. All those fuckers on my 600-pound life are (laughs) ticking along just... Right? Luke Perry, dead. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to work this out live. This, we, we haven't talked about any of this. Right. I'm trying to work this out live on air. And it's just, I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but that's, I am confused by life right now. I yeah. am fucking confused. Yeah. I see that photo pop up of Pete Davidson and then you take Luke Perry from me. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Who's ever just doing this. Right. There is, yeah. Yeah. I, look, Alex Jones might be right, you know? What? Maybe this is a fucking sim world. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You don't just take Luke Perry out like that. Mid-season of a show. Let him finish the season, for Christ's sakes. Mid-season of the second half of his life, God dude. damn, Mid-season. man. Mid-season. Dude worked his ass off. And that's You're taking Luke Perry from us? Leaving Pete Davidson? Yeah. Son of a bitch, man. Yeah. That one stings, Jabes. That yeah. one stings. I know. You know, mm-hmm. I haven't felt I haven't felt like this about a an entertainer because that Prince aside, right? There was a bunch of musicians that I care about. So non musician wise, I don't think I've felt like this about somebody. Man, mine I, was Bourdain, obviously. Bourdain, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it still affects me. <laughs> I know it does. As you know. I, I, I caught you watching old episodes the other night. I do all the time. Yeah. I do all the time. I still, you know, I've listened to Kitchen Confidential yeah. a million times. I've listened to Raw a million times. I mean. Crazy. I just need to hear his voice. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. I'll probably rewatch some 90210 for sure. I'll yeah. definitely get into a couple couple of those episodes, maybe the Malibu episode. You know, the the uh, the strange part about it is it's it's being rebooted as we speak. So they're shooting um, and it's going to air this it's supposed to air this summer and they're doing six episodes. So that was that's the deal with that. Um, right. And then if those six do well, then it's going to come back for a longer run and all that shit. Without um, Dylan, though. It was going to be without Dylan anyways, because he was he was on. Oh, ri- that's he right. Was on Riverdale. So he was going to maybe pop in or something. If he correct. Could. Yeah. Because it was on the same network and it was like, man, the, the way that they're shooting those uh, during the summer and all that stuff. He was the only one not signed on because he's the, look, he's the only one who's a series regular on another show. Right. Uh, he probably would have popped up on, you know, an episode or two, but that would have kind of forced him to work year round because that look, if you're shooting an hour long drama, that's a grind. Yeah. That's, uh, you know. 14 hour days, five days a week type of sitch. It's, you're, look, just being an actor, it's not that stressful, especially on, on a non action show. Sure. Where, where, you, where you don't have to perform any action yeah, yeah. gigs. Um, others are, you know, like Lethal Weapon. That's a, that's a grind where you're doing a lot of stunts and shit like that. But yeah. uh, 
Man. Damn it. Damn it. I'm going to have to watch Riverdale, too. I'm going to have to check it out. And then King Kong Bundy. You know? Yeah. Let's go back to King Kong, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, well, I, I, look, I'll, I'll let this one go for right now. I'll let this one go for right now. I'll go, we'll go to the sponsors, and, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about Luke Perry later. Maybe you can, you can put the, the jingle at the end of the show. What and then I don't know I will have to. Yeah, I can do the whole thing. One of the first celebrities I met in LA was uh, Nat from the Peach Pit. Oh, that's right. Yeah, met him at Red Rocks. Who's uh, not? I I walked in. I was with uh, I was with one of my best friends from college, and we walked in. And we're like. You know, they're always like, oh, celebrities are everywhere. Sure. And you're like, oh, man, they must be. We go to this dive bar, Red Rocks and Sunset, walk in, you know, middle of the afternoon. And there's Nat from the Peach Pit there. And I was like, fuck, it's true. Celebrities are everywhere here. Turns out he was just there every single day. But Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah, know if that. you I didn't see a celebrity that. at a dive bar, they've been there a million <laughs> times. And everyone knows that they go there. Uh like the uh, the rustic, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Andy you... Dick and Oof. yeah. Why couldn't you take Andy? Who's Dick? the twenty four guy? Why couldn't Come you have on. taken Andy Dick? Kiefer the... Sutherland. Kiefer. So Keith and Andy Dick were there all the time, and then if people came in, they were like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, "It's not special. They're here every day." Right, right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like. <laughs> They're just hoping for a tourist They're to walk in. They're getting crocked every day. Oh, crocked. Yeah. Uh, Naked. Dil- yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, Naked. I've, I've, got all a, I've got a great a lot of nude Kiefer Naked. Sutherland story. Yeah. Naked Andy Dick <laughs> under the table. So you're like, he's at the booth. Yep. And then he's like taking your... You're taking his order, you're bringing him drinks the whole time he's pantsless. Andy Dick's got a hog on him. Does he? Yeah, he has. He used to live next door to to my old agent's house, so I've never looked, he would just like, pop over all the time. I, he, he'll pull it out ever, anywhere. Like, mm-hmm. doesn't give a shit. Uh, he used to live next door to to my old agent. I was like, God, what is that like? She was like, It's a fucking nightmare. It's a fucking nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. And he was like at one point married uh, and then had a like a camper that was attached to the house. So she was living in the camper like it was a whole fucking sitch. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but no need. Anywho, we got some sponsors, Shaves, who put this whole stink wagon on the air. What are you doing right there? Just like getting anything out of my eyes. That yeah, might be. in my. Eyes. OK, sure, sure. Do you see spots when you don't see spots? Huh? Yeah, not at all. Not at all. BlackRifleCoffee.com will have you see in spots. Uh, a little BRCC for the day. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee is a premium roast-to-order coffee made with the hands of veterans and shipped out straight to you. Shipping it out. Uh, K-Cups, bags, you name it. Uh, the cup, yeah, you, got the, you just held the mugs up. We got two mugs today. These guys, by the way, if you're watching the video show on YouTube, subscribe to the video show on YouTube. Quit fucking around. Um, this one, uh, these, this ceramic one, was made like, uh, it's got numbers on the bottom of it. I can't tip it over or else all the coffee will spill out. But, um, they, so they only make like 100 of these a piece at a time. And then once they sell out, they sell out and then they make more. But uh, this is one of them. Um, and it's heavy too. It's a big double mug, dude. I, I like it a lot. What's yours? You got a... I think that's a Number, new one. Yeah. Yeah. So mine's... It's got a very Asian feel to it. Well, it's got a coffee shop, like, diner feel to it, which I love. Mm-hmm. So it's a, you know, it's a smaller amount. Right. But it's that coffee shop feel, you know? Yeah. And you just keep getting it refilled and Big I'll fan. have a warm up. Yeah. Yeah. Big Only fan. Only way cooler, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Sign up for the Coffee Club of the Month program. Uh, get your coffee delivered to you. It's so easy. Uh, promo code REVOLUTION. One-time use at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Next up, we've got GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Um, we're in the GhostBed t-shirt today. It's like a nice shirt. It's fucking awesome. It's nine line. Um, whenever something's nine line, I'm, I get down on it. Yeah. I get down on it. Uh, big, fa- big fan of GhostBed.com. 
Uh, actually, these teas are fucking nice, by the way. You can, they, I think they're selling them too on their website. Uh, well, so you, you can, can get just some be teas. Comfy all around. Bed, no pillows. Bed sheets, pillows. Hey, look, if, if you're military or first responder, you get an extra fifteen percent off. All the deals are in place uh, for the bundle packages and all that other shit. So, um, you know, you know, if you want to get a mattress for you and your loved one, your lady. Um, you're gonna get one anyway, right? At yeah, some point, some point, some you point. have to get mattresses. And it's like, a, that's it's a long time purchase. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. so get it from Ghostbed. Get it, get it, and forget it at Ghostbed. Sleep so good it's scary. Thirty six months, no interest. Pay as you go program as well. No one else is doing that. Go to Ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Get all the deals today. They still got that that bundle package for seven ninety nine, which includes the adjustable base and all that shit. Big fan of those guys, man. I love them across the board. Uh, next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Shaves. What? You're slipping. Why? You're oh, slipping. sometimes you have me do it and sometimes you don't. So. Yeah, you got to really kind of inject it. You got to inject it. It's really kind of up to you. It's, it's, you're like DMX. You're slipping today. Slipping. Fall. Can't get up. Slipping. Fall. Can't get up. If you need to get up, get some strike force in, the, in your bones. Let that swirl around. Uh, see how you feel. I feel great on it. I feel alive. Five hours plus worth of energy. Uh, it also, like if you got in a fight with a chimpanzee, you'd be able to knock out the chimpanzee. A lot. They won't tell you that on the package, but I'll tell you that in real life. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. Four amazing flavors. Lemon, original. Orange and make America grape again. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off at strikeforceenergy.com. You doing all right? Yes. Sure? Yeah. All right. What? You seem a little, a little woozy. Uh, no, I'm not woozy. Okay. I'm not woozy. I like to, I got to check on you, Jabes. <laughs> I got to check on you. Some of the audience sends some screenshots where you start to. You start to go side to side. Is it the eyelashes? No. I'm all right. All right. I'm checking on you. Strike Force Energy, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Jabe's straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Are you all right, kids? Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, you have your headphones that on. Is now you get to hear it today. Uncomfortable. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy, isn't it? Um, whew, it's hard to, it's, yeah, it's hard to shake off, isn't it? Straightrazors.com. Is, it's got a, every product. You need to be a man in this world. Do you, like, do you feel like real men should only use straightrazors.com? I do. I do, yeah. James. Yeah. Well, I think they should at least, I'm not going to go that far, but I think they should at least have a grooming regiment. Yeah. And this will send you uh, pretty much everything you need. Sure. From head to uh, taint. Yeah, 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 yeah. You bet. You, um, you and bet and legs. I mean, really, I think there's, you know, there's body wash, right? There's everything there, Shampoo, man. Shampoo, Shampoo, conditioner, conditioners, beard oils, beard mustache oil. waxes. Big fan. Straight razors are amazing. After shave. Yeah, the smolders, the, the goddamn best. If you're worried about uh, using a straight razor, they got a safety razor. And uh, it takes about a day and a half off your shaving. It's great. Go to straightrazors.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. And as always, when darkness falls, it isn't catching a night. She cries while he rides his steed are available everywhere. Those are my books. Funniest books of all time. Um, this one's, this little guy's number one on Audible. When darkness falls, it isn't catch it. Highest rated book on all of Audible. Both books are available on Audible. Hardback, paperback, all that shit. Ebook. Uh, breaking news, Jabes. Mm. And this, this, this is where shit starts to get weird. Um, porn. Porn in I'm listening. the UK has now been blocked. Uh, but you can unlock it by handing over your ID or buying a $5 porn card on your local high street. Um, this is fucking wild, man. But you can't. So watching free porn, you can't. You're not going to be able to watch Pornhub, YouPorn. How? Uh, they're going to block it. 
They're going to block the sites. So they're going to scramble them. I'm looking at it now. Uh, and this is, they're saying it's to protect children. So as early as next month, porn sites will be, will be required to get a proof of ID from UK residents before showing any X-rated clips. So you're going to have to screenshot your, what, what do they have, driver's license over there? Mm-mm. That's not to protect kids. That's to get your information. Crazy. Right? That's just another way to get your information. So it, I it, don't and know. And it says but. it includes Pornhub and YouPorn and, and X videos. Uh, they're going to, oh boy. They're going to join a number of sites and use, using this age ID system, which requires users to verify their age uh, with an official ID, uh, such as a passport or a driver's license. Whoo. I mean. I just taking your information. You just got to do it one time. Each website will have to create their own non-pornographic landing page for this purpose in Britain. Wow. I'm trying to figure out how I feel about this. Wait, I, look, I, this, this goes even further. So when somebody first logs in, they'll be asked to register with an age, with age ID and verify their age using a mobile SMS, which is a text message. Um, credit card, passport, or, or driver's license. I mean, it's a one-time verification, but to me, mm. Mm. you're just taking people's identification. If that's what it is. And then, then what? Because that's going to get hacked and then leaked. You. Yeah, but um, yeah. If they are trying to protect kids from seeing this stuff, I guess I'm into that. You know, Ooh. I'm I'm having a bit of a bit of trouble with this one. Do I want to sign in, you know, and give an ID? No. Right. Do I want it to feel like official, like I'm entering a thing? No. I mean, I, I want to feel like I'm stealing it I, on I, X videos. I, again, like this, this is breaking news. This is live right now. Uh, I guess let's see. Thinking this out loud, because we didn't have this coming. You and I didn't have this on the come up, right? No. You had. We didn't have as access. We didn't have. We, you didn't have access to porn. It was no. pretty much like, hey, Cinemax you or find bus. a magazine somewhere exactly, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and then when you did find that magazine, you 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 hoarded it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You it was stashed usually it away. like in the woods somewhere. And you're yeah. Like, Oof. Yeah. Mine were in my house. My parents found all of them. So they, they found, moved. Where would you find it? You had someone buy it for you. Uh, I had a fake ID at some okay. point, so you were getting like magazines and shit like you that. You never but found your like, dad's or whatever? No, no, they didn't have any. Yeah. So, you know, uh, man, I, I don't know what the right answer is for this. I don't know either. I guess if I didn't have kids, I'd be like, fuck you, motherfucker. Yeah. Get off my shit. Yeah. Just trying to watch a little porn. Yeah, just trying to watch a little porn. Hey. Because, I mean, then if you look at it that way, then these porn sites have all your personal information. Yeah. And they have your, like, history. Yeah. Probably of what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Of, of, of all the shit you're watching. Can't get away from, can't get away with murder. No, that's a, that's a dark, Never again. that's a dark yeah. world right there. If, if that's what it's going to be. Man. I don't know. Because the other thing that we're talking about doing yesterday was taxing all of, essentially an internet tax. So, you know, Amazon or uh, Facebook or all of this shit over in Europe, they want to tax, tax them for, you know, for essentially use. using their Internet. And because uh, oh, they're not paying any taxes. So Amazon, this is right. the second year in a row. Oh. Amazon has not paid taxes. Or you're just like, what? Why? Because there's all kinds of tax loopholes. Right. So they exploit all of them. And then, right. you know, they're writing it down as a loss. They've paid zero dollars the last two years in, in American taxes in, in the U.S. Mm. And a lot of these big corporations like, like Facebook, I believe all their shits out of like Ireland or something. Right. Um, and they're trying to do away with like, you know, just so they can hide tax wise because you're saying, all right, great. I'm on the World Wide Web. It's around the world. You can you could really put your your company anywhere essentially yeah porn though Oof. don't don't 
come for my that's the that's the last I, I, that's the last people i'd want to give my id to is porn yeah you know exactly so do i have a problem giving my id um on the internet not really i just don't want to <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, here's the thing. I don't want to make it official. I think a lot of people don't want to make it official as far as like looking at porn, right? Right. You just want to kind of look at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you wanted to make it official, you'd like buy, you know, you'd pay for those sites, right? Yeah. Of whatever you're into, you would actually subscribe or do whatever. I don't know what it really is, but whatever they're stealing these clips from right. are paying sites. Well, and, and the, the weird thing is, is most of these sites have now, like, por- like Pornhub is monetized. We talked about this on Drinking Bros uh, a few weeks back. Pornhub is actually monetizing its stars. So the, the worry about porn was this of, great, yeah, you're stealing clips and then just putting them up or stealing movies and putting them up and then they're, they're not getting paid for it. Nobody's getting paid for it. Right. Now... All these amateurs and shit are on there with verified followings. It's monetized like YouTube and you just get fucking shacks. And uh, one of the couples that we talked about on, on Drinking Bros, a young couple out of uh, Las Vegas, uh, made over $9 million last year, monetized through Pornhub. And, you know, that was a way to beat sort of the porn star industry of like, oh man, I've got to go out there and do X to kind of break right. in. Now you don't really have to anymore. Yeah. You're essentially, you can be like your own Logan Paul of, of porn stars. Of porn, yeah. If, if you want to, which, why, why wouldn't you, I guess, if you control, if you own it all. Like, yeah. I think that's probably the new frontier. But now you're asking people to give IDs and all that shit. Like, ugh. I don't know. I don't like it. Yikes. I don't like it. I don't want to make it official. Yeah, but also, what do you do to your own kids? Is there, because I, I don't even know what the settings are on a computer to go in and be like, oh, make it restricted, you know? Yeah, I mean, if they're at an age that they're able to spell and search out this stuff, I mean, that's, a, that's another conversation, right? Because, I mean, you can go to Google and just type like in my... tits. You're going to see 8 million photos of tits, right? Right. But at what age? I'm not really sure yet. So at what age are they interested in that, looking at that? I mean, I think it's younger and younger, but like, I don't have to worry about it with my five-year-old right now. No. You know what I'm saying? Sixth so grade, probably. He's never going to be like, oh, porn just came up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with, with, with all of this shit on the internet, because I Look, Russia the other day said they wanted to have their own internet. They said they don't want a World Wide Web anymore. They just want a, a Russian internet. Which, I, look, hear, hear me out on this. I ki- it kind of makes sense, and I'll tell you why. With, you know, so-called Russia interfering in our election, which they didn't interfere in the election by doing ballots or anything. They did it through social media of posting stories on Facebook and Twitter and all of that stuff, right? Let's say if you were the American government, why couldn't you go in there and block out everything from Russia? Because what? That that, that ends freedom of speech, I guess? Freedom of speech around the world? Yeah. But if you're truly affected on on the psychological, you know, warfare that it's created, which I, I guess is Russia's point at this point of like, hey, the influence that is penetrating this country from abroad is we think is too dangerous and that cyber warfare is too dangerous when we want to control our own internet. Are we that far away from it in our own country? Because me personally, if you look at it, uh, and, and I look, I had this conversation with the, with one of my best friends of like, I, you know, I still believe that half of these hashtags are fake on Twitter and it's created by bots. Uh, I, I think most of these comments um, including the Michael Jackson one, um, are, are generated by people who are paid or fake bots and things like that. Uh, when that, that Finding Neverland doc, or Leaving Neverland leaving doc, Neverland. Um, there was a lot of comments by the same people, didn't have any followers, it was like eggshells and all this other yeah. shit. And I'm like, uh, where is this coming from? Like, mm-hmm. And I think, me personally, it's you know other countries trying to influence what we think about America, what we talk about, what we say, and all that other stuff. 
How far I don't know about away are we from that? that one, I, I do, uh, and I'll I tell you why. It. Like, I mean, Wendy you, Williams you said it saying, yeah. perfectly last night, of or yesterday on, on whatever the last show was. You said it perfectly, I thought, of everyone, everyone in the world thought that Michael Jackson was the greatest thing of all time, the greatest pop star of all time, except for you. You were in, in a very, very small minority of this. He didn't By telling money. people... You, and you're right. You're absolutely right in saying that. Um, but by telling people this, uh, when you go to like this, this thing that is so polarizing, like this Leaving Neverland mm-hmm. doc, and you're flooding social media with comments of, no, man, I love Michael. Michael's mm-hmm. great and all this other stuff or whatever. It forces you into uncomfortable conversations or feelings about pedophilia. And mm-hmm. uh, there's, it, 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 it is a, a topic of division for sure amongst Americans and other people around the world where you're like, no, fuck you. I think Michael's awesome. I think the topic is believing victims. And yes. we are we yes. are pretty we are kind of divided in that. Right. But you have to at least watch it. So a lot of these people are that are saying they don't believe, they're like, I can't even watch it. I'm not even gonna deal with these lies. It's like Blasey Ford. It's like, you know, do you but do you believe her? That was that was a huge dividing. It was thing for us, but and I, then I think that now was a, it's like I no evidence. A, yeah, believe the victim. But I think that was another narrative that was pushed by other countries yeah. and people that were paid. So and, in the same way, yeah, to divide the the, the country and d- again, it's psychological and it's to provide talking points that are controversial that keep you talking about the same subject that you're going to be divided on mm-hmm. um you know e- even in fuck I mean, fat tuesdays currently going on we're recording this show on tuesday uh they're doing you know carnival and rio and all of that shit um somebody showed up as michael jackson in this fucking thing you know dressed as michael jackson on one of these floats and uh you know people went bug fuck over it like bug fucking that they were pissed Shocked. Shocked, yeah. Um, Shocked. Especially after this, this documentary has been going on and everybody's been watching it the last two days. It's just like... Because, you know, I finished it and uh, it, it was what I thought, you know, at the end. Like, there was no, like, gotcha moment or anything else. And I, me personally, those two guys, I believe, um, I mean, they, they said that where they were... At, every single point of their abuse for fucking close to goddamn 15 years a piece and yeah. different rooms, the same rooms. You wouldn't know about they these described rules, every these, single yeah. thing in such great detail. You wouldn't detail. know about these rooms and these beds and things if right. you weren't taken there. Whereas the Blasey Ford thing, she didn't know where she was. It was very, it was very hazy. He and wasn't again, at the party. Like I, I, I not sure if I believe her or not it was just a completely different thing my grappling with it was do i care or not for high school kids do you know what i'm saying with her right with her it wasn't whether i believed her or not it was whether is this a a relevant conversation is this a conversation that i want to have about a high school experience with a 50 year old woman not really yeah so i don't know who can't remember anything or any, yeah. you know, he wasn't there. And, you know, I'm not saying somebody wasn't on top of her, but I, look, she wasn't raped. Right. Um, so I, th- that one's a tough one where it's just like, you don't uh, watching her talk about it. She didn't know anything. I don't know where I was. I don't know where right. this house was. I can't remember the date. It's kind of hazy. It's been a long time talking and in a baby very, voice. Um, very emotional, which I was saying with the documentary is something that brought some credibility to me, to, to them. Yeah. Where uh, she was very emotional. And to have that be so long ago and be that insanely emotional about it, you haven't worked through it yet. You haven't gotten to the point where you can talk about it. You right. know, where it seems like these guys have been through therapy. They've been through things. They've got, it's been enough time or they've dealt with whatever they need to deal with, deal with. And now they can have a real conversation about it and not just be so, right. you know, 
Right. And, and the Not other, the, 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 the other thing that, that I, I found interesting was, uh, last night they said that when, cause you know, when he went on trial mm-hmm. uh, for that one kid. And that was what a lot of people are saying is the big, that why didn't they, why'd they lie then? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, I, you found out that answer mm-hmm. where, you know, he had called all of them. He had called all of his former of victims and made friends with them again and then told them what to say, do lie, all that stuff. Yep. And they had voicemails from it. Yep. So they played the voicemails of Michael calling mm-hmm. desperately trying to get did. to these kids and talk to these kids and all of this shit. And, and he's still Michael Jackson. So you're still wanting to get back in the good graces of him. Yeah. He never went, he never was a, um, a figure that you're like, Oh, okay. He's hit rock bottom or you don't want to be a part of it anymore. Right. If Michael Jackson calls you still. Yeah. If Michael Jackson called you at that time, you would do what he said. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I, absolutely. So w- when I saw the rest of it, I was just like, "Cool." I'm, yeah. I'm. By the way, after I guess you know we finished it now, I'm done with. I'm all good on Michael Jackson for forever. You look at him differently. The way that he talks, even that Pepsi commercial, the way that he's looking at that kid, <laughs> everything is flipped, right? As it should be. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, I, he's I am. Like, a, hey. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm officially off. I know you're amped about it. I'm amped. Am I amped? It's not a thing that I'm amped about. It, again, I had to say again, it doesn't make me happy. Yeah. But it, it is a sort of thing like I was glad that I saw it. <laughs> it makes me feel good about my instincts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to yeah where you were right. You, you no, have a right. feeling, uh-huh. if you've had a feeling for years, if someone just does not... If someone rubs you the wrong way, in that way, if you have a bad feeling about something, walk away. Right. Do not let the kid sleep in the fucking bed. <laughs> yeah. I don't. If you have a little bit of a feeling, that's what you learn from this whole thing. I don't if know how you, you let a kid sleep in a fucking 25-year-old man's bed anyways, but. So I was talking to one of my friends in the neighborhood about it. They didn't see it. Nobody fucking sees shit right. around here. Anyways, but I'm trying to explain it and they're just like, yeah, but I mean, how do they explain, you know, he was so childlike and all of this. And I go, okay, you have a five-year-old, right? So I had to break it down where who's your favorite person right now? You know, and they're like, oh, whoever they said, right? Right. Whoever the pop star is that they love. Sure. And I'm like, they take you out. They take you to a limo. They take you to a hotel. They say, I want to. He's going to sleep with me. You're going to sleep out here. What? No, no. And I'm like, what's the difference? There yeah. you go. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. It, it's that feeling right there. It would be the equivalent of today, like, like age wise of Justin Timberlake taking your five year old and asking them to sleep in the same and bed. With Justin a Timberlake. lot of people, they would get far enough. And there's a lot of people that would say it's just. Justin, like he's, Justin Timberlake, no big deal. Him, we see we, him on the TV. We know him. He's no. like best friends with Jimmy Fallon. Like I know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right? Yeah. <laughs> crazy. It's crazy that you have to break it down in that way for people. But pretty much when you do that every time and you say like in when you have kids and you say, can he sleep in the bed with whatever? Yeah. And then you sleep out on the couch just for and they're, they're not going to do anything. Right. And right. you assure them they're not going to do anything. Yeah. They're just going to like play games and watch. You, you can't go in there and the door may be locked, but they're just going to, they're so childlike. You know, they're both children. Yeah. Nope. They're not. They're not children. And then you go, how did this even happen? Yeah. And you go, I don't know. I don't know. I cannot <laughs> tell you, but I'm telling you, this is what they're breaking down and this is what they're shoving in your face. Well, I, I will say this. A lot of the comments online uh, after the last two nights have been these fucking parents. So, um, and it is. And they got caught up in it. It is. And, uh, you know. It was really their fault. And when you really, really break it down, the parents completely failed them. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Jackson, but also, I mean, and he really did a good job with these parents. But, my God. Yeah. You need to be ashamed. I mean, they need to be ashamed of themselves for sure. Uh, absolutely and insane. And that's not, they didn't really delve enough into that, I don't think. No. No, uh, I, if I, if I have one knock on the documentary, that's, it's that like that they're asking not, the parents, they don't go more, hard, go on hard the, yeah. they don't go hard on those moms. And I guess they wanted them to talk and wanted them to be can- candid, but 
And even the kids don't feel, they don't talk about how they're pissed at their parents at all. Yeah. And that's really, I mean, for a five-year-old, you, know you the, are everything. You know, the, uh, the dad, Wade Robson's dad ended up killing himself. Yeah. I didn't know that until last, like, I was like, whoa. Right. Right after the, because. Right after they left. Right after, I think, the, the, well, the brother left to go see them and he was just like, I'm, I can't do this anymore. Well, the I mean, it mom, was, the mom left dark. with the family, right? So left the, left the dad there by yeah. himself, bipolar. It is a, it is, it's a hard doc to watch. It is dark, but I think if you're a parent, it's important and, you know. And I would hope that we've learned enough over the years of all these, you know, the days of that's the pedophile that lives down the street. Yeah. The days of that are hopefully gone or the days of even, I mean, I question anyone now that wants to spend a lot of time with kids. It's sad, but it's the only, it's the other, it's the only other alternative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to, if a coach wants to hang out with your kids a lot or something, you know, it's sad, but why, it's better to vet them, to have questions, to be safe and diligent than it is to just be like, well, I don't want to like hurt his feelings right. or I don't, because listen, I have kids and I love them. I do not like hanging out with kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm not like, bring me all the kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just play. I just want to be around. <laughs> be wary. Yeah, be real of wary. Someone that wants to be around kids all the time. Yeah. Because they are not great. No, not at all. They're cute and, and all of this, and, and they're great if they're your own kids, but you're a special person. In a, There's two different kinds of special that you can be. Yeah. If you want to hang out with oh, kids yeah. all the time, you're either a fucking saint, a saint. Or a pedophile. Or a fucking pedophile, and those are two. Yeah, there's, there is there's no, no in, between. in between. There's no someone like me. I mean, I have to pick up this kid from... From school, a friend, and I'm just like, oh god, yeah, nightmare. I have to deal with that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. I have to deal with another fucking kid. Oy, oy, I hear oy, you. Oy. Uh, by the way, Hillary's not running. She made that announcement last night. I'm, I, I, I am actually surprised. Add it to the list of things I'm not surprised about. I oh, would you're not. Be, no, I, I would, am actually. I would have been so shocked if she decided to go thrice. I mean, <laughs> well, with with pr- so look, shocked with with these uh, debates starting um, in June, which is rapidly approaching. Right. It, the, the month of March is is kind of by the end of March. That's your last month to get in. So they're looking at uh, Hillary, Biden and Beto or the, the last. I'm not calling him Beto, by the way. Pito. Yeah, I'm not calling him that. Um, Little Pito, Pito. Oh. They, like uh, this is kind of the the end. Like if you're gonna do it, it's time because you know you're, you're gonna have debates in June coming up, right? Yeah. She finally gave some person the exclusive and said no, she wasn't gonna do it. Here, here's why I was unsure is because why wait until this late if, in the game? Like everybody else kind of announced Kamala and and all the rest of those to get a jump start on it I back mean, in January. They had to rip that. I mean, they had to rip it from her. That's fucking that's what I think, right? De- oh yes, yes. Because I think she would have ran. Veep is very good at, at paralleling the uh, Hillary trajectory, right? Right. And she, I think, in the last season, is like kind of mentioning that she wants to run again, and everyone around her is like, "Oh, uh, okay, <sighs> okay." <laughs> um, <sighs> Oh, and she's, yep, I think it's my time, right? Yeah. And she's just so delusional. And I, do you, don't you think that it, it, there was a, a bunch of people around her that just had to be like, Oof. hey, people still really don't like you. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. So you're, look, she's gone. Uh, Biden is still deciding. And then so is, is Beto. I, I don't see a world in which Beto doesn't fucking enter, but. Um, no, I mean, he's going to, I guess I would be surprised if, if Biden does as well. I mean, he's an, he's an older guy and I'm not sure. Well, so CNN is already doing like town halls and all that other shit. I mean, they're, look, this has become a ratings machine now for 
these networks. Right. Uh, CNN has been doing these town hall things with like even in local elections where you're like, all right, cool. Okay. Um, I, I mean, it's in one way. It's great that people are getting interested in politics and following it and, and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. But in the other way, it's just like, man, it, it feels very salacious and. And that you're setting up storylines and, and drama that's kind of like it, it feels like a TV show rather than actual politics anymore, which. But you know, again, I guess it, when you have a reality star president, it doesn't really fucking matter. Game over at this again, point. The genie's out of the bottle. You can't put it back in. Yeah. So they CNN has been conducting these live focus groups and uh, the focus group on CNN rejected Biden yesterday. They said, no, we, we he wouldn't be president. And I. I just to don't me, think he's up for the fight, man. I just don't think he's up for it right now. Out of that crew, though, I would. I thought I would. I probably would have said, "Your best bet is is Biden." Or B-. I would have said Beto before the whole fucking you know walkabout that he took, uh, documenting his own journey at the beginning mm-hmm. of the year after he lost hey. to Ted Cruz, and he's, he was just videotaping himself doing weird like rich white man shit, where you're just like, "All right, cool." Like your whole constituency and your whole base on that side is anti fucking white male privilege at this point. So I don't just did a Beto bucket list or what? Yeah. Where he was just traveling around the country, meeting people and the writings and the things where he was like a sat in a, in an old, uh, you know, broken down. It was like a Springsteen song. Where you're just like, man, I was at an old rusty diner off of highway 10, met a couple named Sangria. You know, we're just like, what? The that's fuck my are new, you? that's one of my new pet peeves online. What's that? Is when people don't realize how much of a luxury traveling at all is. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Because of cost or? Because of cost, because of, you know, getting time off, because of kids, because of everything. Right. Everything. Or even, you know, traveling for fun even, you know, where they take pictures of themselves in front of, you know, Taj Mahal yeah. or whatever. Yeah, 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 like, yeah being being tone deaf to the fact that that is it's almost it's like the rich white lady telling you to live your dreams you know so it, my right. new thing is people taking these pictures traveling and just being like get out there get fresh air you know like yeah, yeah, do yeah. something for yourself and not, again not realizing how much of a privilege it is to even be able to travel to one place sure in a year yeah, so for a I, lot of people. I have a few friends who are like that, right? Um, but I will say this. They don't, they don't say get out there. They don't say do it. They're just rich and they just do it. Um, if you're just and rich it. and you just do you're it, just yeah. Like, all right, great. Yeah, I think it's Yeah, you're this, in Cabo for the fucking right. 18th week in a row. That's amazing. Um, right. I, um, congratulations on all that. But they don't put like, you know, hashtag just do it or live the dream or whatever. That, they like don't being, do it. Listen, being blasé about it. I'm starting to not like. How, how so? Just being bl- just being so blasé about just traveling in any way, you know. A picture of the plane wing, <laughs> you know. The I don't know, like not realizing, like there are people that cannot even get off two days in a row. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it just feels very. We're so desensitized the fact that like everybody can do it, right? You can just go, just get a plane ticket, just go. You can just go on vacation. You just, I'm, I'm in the Bahamas, like, and not realizing that that's such a fucking huge brag to a hu- like a large portion of the world. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, this one, I'll, I'll have to go against you on, James, because I, I go to a lot of shit, you know, and I post like it's fucking nothing to me. And I'm yeah. sure, I, I'm, you're right. I'm sure people look at the, the events and all the things that I do and they're like, that fucking asshole. Is out That's at another kind of goddamn work, thing. I guess, though, it is work. So I mean, when people I'm doing live shows everywhere and stuff, I, it's a little. My bit job is different. fun. Yeah, it's a little bit different than just. I guess I'm more knocking on a millennial, just just traveling and acting <laughs> like it's NBD. Yeah. Right. Well, but it's a BD. We're at a. It's a real BD. Yeah, it's a real BD. <laughs> It's a real BD right now. We're at a, as of today's report, we're at an all time record for debt on credit cards. So maybe, just maybe, James, all the shit you're looking at is charged somewhere and is not I'm being sure. paid for. And 
The re- yeah, the, the credit card debt is at eight hundred and seventy billion right now in this country. Whoo! It could all come crashing down soon. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, again, my myself, myself is I, I am Ross Patterson. I am the revolutionary figure of the day for saving my own yeah, life today. Yeah, which you already said. I am. Uh, but we're going to lead us off the air, Jabes, with uh, with a little little 90210. Yes. Yeah, it's it. So why don't you play us out with that? The I Jesse will Wiseman, do. a.k.a. the Jables. I am Ross Patterson. You know what? Good night, Luke Perry. Good night, Luke Perry. Oh.